Hi YouTube, this is uh, Pam Withers, this is uh, part 5 of uh, Paramore Station. I've uh, since clad these uh, wood bridges I made up with the 7mm plastic card, like the uh, large stonework. And uh, this is in their like raw state, basically clad them with plastic. Uh, cut out some small bits to form like arches um, that's looking in over the road bridge and this is uh, looking around the other side uh, looking through the Paramore station basically just put a coat of uh, grey undercoat straight over them and the bits of white you can see is just a bit of the uh, painter's mate just to fill in any gaps so uh, Done this tunnel uh, mouth around here and uh, done the other road bridge just around here. So they're all clad uh, with the old plastic card painted over, ready to uh, do a little bit of um, weathering on them. So, next uh, project is in here in the yard. Obviously I didn't weather the track in here and what I wanted to do was fill in between the sleepers with some DAS modelling clay and I'll probably fill in in between the tracks around this area give it the appearance of uh, olden days hopefully a bit like a you know a steam yard but obviously then hopefully weather it up so this is something I haven't tried before and uh, Obviously we'll have a look and see how this turns out, but in theory I'm going to level up between the tracks with the modelling clay, filling in between the sleepers so it's fairly smooth in there. And, uh, and so we'll perhaps have a look at this in a while. Can't really find much on YouTube of uh, how it's done, but I've heard the clay mentioned, so I uh, thought we'll fill that in probably fill in over here as well and then that will have a little road come in that we can perhaps have a couple of lorries there but uh, that's the next plan so probably looking at this yard and weathering the bridges up anyway we'll see you in a while right I'll just show you uh, just filling in between the uh, sleepers we've got this DAS uh, modeling clay hair drying product and uh, all we'll do is get like a little ball and uh, rub it in. <clears throat> so in theory, this will just give like a very smooth finish, like you used to see in the old steam yards. And uh, as I say I've never done it before, so this is a bit new to me. But uh, just basically press it in between the sleepers. I want to try and. Uh, Obviously when I paint it, I have the sleepers a little bit exposed. And what I've done is uh, just had a screwdriver and run. Let's pull it back that way. I haven't got a small tripod and the big ones won't fit here. So just run the screwdriver down the edge of the track to get uh, the clay out of the uh, edge. rub it in and obviously it will have to be painted over and weathered up but should uh, hopefully get the desired effect but as I say we've got two chances we'll have a little rag and then wipe in the track edge so that we know that uh, the wheels won't catch on it when it's running through I know uh, not rocket science I wouldn't have thought that. So just to give you an idea of what I'm doing, just filling that in. I'll run a wagon over it and make sure it doesn't fall. And like I say, I'll do, I'll do the three tracks here and then we'll probably fill in in between the tracks and uh, come back and have another look. Good oh, morning everyone. Um, did this uh, modelling clay filled in between all the uh, sleepers yesterday. So I'm going to See if we can put a bit of colour over this now and see if I can achieve what I want to achieve, shall we say. 
But uh, we'll have a look back once I've uh, detailed it up a bit. Good evening. Here's a uh, shot of these uh, sidings painted up. Um, literally just had their first coats of paint, so I haven't done a lot to it. A bit of dry brushing needs to be done. I've uh, had like an oil effect uh, product that I've tried in the uh, sidings. A little bit shiny, I think it could do with a bit of toning down. It's a bit too uniform, but uh, the effect didn't fire off what I want. Uh, I see Graham Fulson, he uh, used cigarette ash on his ash pit and I might see if I can get hold of a bit and perhaps just sprinkle around in, in between the sleepers and uh, perhaps in between, but not looking too bad. But uh, the main reason that uh, I wanted to build this bit was uh, this here. This is Paramwell, or the start of Paramwell Signal Box, which was, I think, the only elevated signal box in Cornwall. So, uh, this was one of the main reasons I wanted to build this layout, but, uh, or this section anyway. I'll just have a quick, I'll take it off, and we'll have a quick look at the book that I'm working from. Right, so here's the uh, picture that I found in a book. There's two or three pictures of it. Um, and I thought it's a little bit unusual. It was actually uh, built in 1894 and remained in use until all, uh, April 1966, a year after I was born. So obviously I'd never seen it. It's just uh, happened to buy a book and see the photograph. So... Uh, this is what we're in the midst of doing. Obviously it's on like a high section um, steel frame. It's got high section uprights. And it looks like they used a um, little bit of track bent around to brace that up. So I've uh, literally just, just uh, cut these sections out. Well, they was cut out freehand and uh, didn't work too bad, so I thought we would just have a look at it at this stage. And uh, got the old uh, timber weatherboarding on here, and I presume the um, rods from the levers would have come down behind here. So presumably, the lever frame was just across this section oh, with the rods below. Obviously, it sits on the platform and down between the tracks. So, uh, like I say, it's uh, basically plastic strut and uh, plastic magic to stick it together. But we're going to have a look at this now. I thought I've done enough scenery, green stuff. I thought we'll do a bit of uh, scratch building. And I'll see if we can sort the sides out. And then we'll have another look. Evening all. Um, got all the signal box walls constructed now. Got my little, uh, there'll be a doorway in there. So, uh, made this out of one mil plastic card. And, uh, yeah. I'm quite pleased it's gone together quite nicely. So, uh, I was um, looking at the windows and there was uh, works out of 24 panes in these bigger ones and uh, I think it was 18 panes in the side ones a little bit smaller there and uh, I was looking at doing it my um, normal way of having a bit of uh, clear plastic and marking it out with a pen uh, but this uh, here will show you, I just roughly marked this out as a grid layout for the windows. And I marked one out with uh, my white marker pen, but it made the glazing bars way too big. I, when I've done uh, made up windows for some of the buildings, I've used uh, this here uh, UniPaint marker pen, which will mark on plastic. 
and once it's dry you can handle it but uh, I did a, a dummy run and I think I've actually chucked it in the bin now but it didn't uh, didn't really look that good so uh, I've had a word with uh, Justin at Model Rail Scenery and uh, hopefully he's going to laser cut me some to fit the opening so uh, hopefully he'll be able to sort something out for that and we'll uh, have a look but I've made it so the windows will probably sit into the openings might be a bit fiddly to fit but I thought rather than uh, how can I say fitting them as I go I thought I'll fit them afterwards so it'll, uh, all this plastic hard will be covered with the um, plastic weatherboarding and at least then I can get it painted up and fit the windows afterwards just in case I don't get them too quick but uh, yeah gone together quite well I'm gonna leave it to this I'll uh, do a photo of it in position with a train underneath just to give you an idea of uh, how it sits in there and we'll leave it to that anyway thanks a lot for watching and bye for now